And so how will the Sixers respond in game six on the road? Well, we would get our answer. But Trey Young coming in as the second player in NBA history to average 29 and 10 in his first 10 playoff games. Oscar Robertson, the other guy, but yo, just mad chill. He does this every game, knocking it down from the bench before the game started. And then once the ball was in the air, Trey was doing his thing, setting up Clint Capella there on the alley-oop. And then how about a little step back three? 11 points, three assists in the first quarter. Hawks up early. Maybe they didn't know what to do with the lead. Midway through the second. Trey, errant pass, but Capella flips it back to him inside to Capella. All right, you give it, I give it back. Less than a minute to go. You know what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold. Trey Young from almost midcourt. His 11th straight playoff game with 20 or more points and 7 or more assists. That's the longest streak in NBA history. Atlanta up forward to break third quarter. Here come the Sixers. Seth Curry knocks down a three. Seth Curry knocks down another three. He tied for a team high 24. The Sixers going a 14-0 run. They're up eight. Then here Embiid. Oh, that is footwork over Capella. And then here, Trey to John Collins on the drive. Oh, get them uh. together. Get them together, John. Taking MB to Ariel Suplex City. So the Hawks were up for the break. They're down four going to the fourth quarter in the final frame. It's now a five point advantage for Philly. Trey blocked by Embiid. Huge defensive play there by the process. Minute later. Embiid, offensive board, and put back over the front of the rim. That pushes the lead to eight. Less than four to go. Embiid, another offensive rebound. Call for the offensive foul, and then now we got issues. We got issues. Embiid doing the whole, hey, I'm not doing anything. My hands are wide open, but just stepping straight forward. Trey Young didn't like it. We got technicals. We still got game. Trey over Maxi. Are you serious? Game high, 34 points, 12 assists, but he was just two for nine in the fourth quarter. Hawks within one. And then here Embiid misses, gets his own rebound. He goes for 22 and 13. And the Sixers force a game seven. Doc, what was you telling Embiid right here? Already I'm a winner. I can feel it when I step up in the building, man. They know I'm finna kill it. Hey, Trey! for Trey Young. Game so vicious, going hard when I'm in it, one one Wow, Seth Curry can't be stopped. Lobs. Oh, Collins with one hand. Sideways eight, I would not stop. We're going back to Philly. The Sixers force game seven. Down 3-2 on the road, facing elimination. The Sixers force a game seven back in Philly. Tim Legler with us here on SportsCenter. Tim, what were the Sixers able to do in this game, especially down the stretch, that they couldn't do in games four and five? Well, look, Trey Young's had a historic start yes. to his playoff career. Scoring, playmaking, and in the fourth quarter, basically, of the previous game, and in the first half of this game, he's living in the paint. Scoring, free throws, lobs. A little bit different at the end of this game. The Sixers made the adjustment. Now, part of it was the way Atlanta sets this up. Now, what they've been running this entire series is this high ball screen, Trey Young getting downhill, and then you have Clint Capella typically running to the rim. Very difficult for the Sixers to defend this, particularly when Joel Embiid is this far out on the floor. Now, in this particular case, Atlanta actually does him a favor. Trey Young comes off, but Clint Capella never resets this screen. So instead, he just stays here in the perimeter. And he's locked up with Embiid. Now, this is still a great recovery by Joel Embiid. Young beats Curry off the dribble, and you can see the Sixers on the back line. You've got to stay connected to the shooter. So where is the help going to come from? Take a look at the ground Joel Embiid covers to get to the rim. So their collective ability to not give up the lob, not foul him, rim protection, you play him differently at the end of the game. Now this was critical to me. How are you going to close the game offensively? You take a look at the score here. We got a one-point game, a minute 50. This is the game. You come out of a timeout, what are you going to run? Now take a look at this screen that they're trying to set up. There's a ball screen right here coming for Joel Embiid to roll him into the post. Now what you're hoping if you're Clint Capella, you get some help from Herter. Give me a bump or something to slow him up so I can get down there and play him. The problem with that is he is guarding Curry. So Herter now is terrified. So he's going to try to shoot over the top. As a result, 
Capella gets no bump. And now take a look where Embiid catches it. Capella's tied up in his screen. When Embiid turns, he can't even believe how much space he has. He misses the layup, but he smartly throws it off the glass, gets the put back. To me, that was the biggest possession of the game. If you go back to game five, Mike, at the end of that game, in the last yeah. three minutes, so much indecisiveness on the part of Philadelphia. What are we going to do here to close this game out? I've never understood it because that's your best option. But you run a set to get him something deep. That's yeah. what they did so he won't drift out, take a jump shot. They went to their bread and butter player, and they gave him something to work with out of a timeout. I thought that was the biggest possession of the game. He gave him a three-point lead. They just closed it out better, this one on the yeah. road. Let's see if they can do the same thing in Philadelphia on Sunday. Well, speaking of game sevens, we've got one Saturday night in Brooklyn, Nets and Bucks. Kyrie Irving, according to Steve Nash, would not be available for this game. What impact will that have on this elimination game? It's huge. So this, to me, comes down to one very simple thing. Are we going to get a different James Harden mm. than we saw the last two games? Because, look, he's gutting it out. You've got to give him yeah. the props for that. Bottom line is, though, it's all step-back threes and a couple of floaters. That's not the guy that we saw over the last eight to ten years. If he can get to the line and give them some supplemental scoring to take some of the pressure off Kevin Durant, I think the Nets have a chance to win. If not, the Bucks are a better team. They're a more complete team right now. Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know he's going to put up numbers. Chris Middleton is operating right now with comfort. And I love the fact that Drew Holiday took 21 shots in the last game. He carried himself like a star. He didn't shoot great, but he put enough pressure on them. So you've got three different guys to answer the bell. For Brooklyn, it's basically Kevin Durant. And if James Harden is that limited again, mm -hmm. where will it come from? You would need something special out of a Joe Harris or a Jeff Green or a Blake Griffin. Those three guys together, maybe they got to make 15 threes to help Kevin Durant out. I'm just waiting to see what James Harden looks like. Does he have more in the tank for a Game 7 just to give them a little bit more of a threat offensively to help Kevin Durant out? One thing you know about KD, he's going down shooting. Oh, yeah, Whatever sure. happens in that game, he's going for his. He may have to go for 50 in this game. Legs, good stuff as always, brother. Thanks, Mike. All right. Let's get live to Joel Embiid after receiving treatment after this Game 6 win. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, Joel, we will get started with Kai Carlin. Hey, Joe, can you just real quick take us through the, the altercation with John in the second half? Um, well, I got a tag for it, uh, and I didn't think it was a, an offensive foul. And, um, you know, I was, I was just trying to stay calm and, you know, have my hands up. And Someone was pushing me from the back, and I don't understand why I got a tech, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, you know, uh, I was hacked all night, and I don't think I got a free throw line until I got to the, you know, fourth quarter and all that stuff. Uh, so it was questionable, but, you know, we got the win. That's all that matters. Do, do you feel like maybe the Hawks are just getting away uh, with some extra stuff, or...? Well, they, I told them, uh, you know, they had to call it both ways. We got it. We had a bunch of guys, whether it's Ben or Tobias, in foul trouble. Uh, I just felt like he wasn't called both ways, uh, especially because of the minimal contact um, that they, they get, uh, you know, on the point goal. Uh, and when it comes to us, uh, you know, we don't get the same thing. So, uh, you know, I just want to call both ways. If we're going to call, you know, some like nothing on, you know, the point guard should be the same way. Uh, they call the same thing on me when I get, if I get touched. Thanks, sir. Thank you, McManaman. Well, in many ways, the biggest moment of your career was two years ago, game seven. How much have you been waiting for him to have redemption to that? And with that context, how do you look forward to game seven? Uh, I'm excited. Um, you know, uh, this time around is our home. Uh, even back then, I believe that you know, if we have, if we had home court, uh, it would have been uh, easier to win. Uh, but uh, that's why we worked so hard in the regular season to get that home court advantage. Uh, uh, you know, playing in front of our fans. Uh, I know we blew. You know, that lead uh, last game, uh, that's something we should have uh, never done. Um, but, you know, you know, tonight we were, we just kept telling each other, you know, 48 minutes. Uh, you know, we got to be focused for 48 minutes. And uh, so that's what we had to do and we'll be fine. 
Mike McGarry. Joel, how key has Seth Curry um, been for you guys this series? And you and him have particularly worked well together. How big has that action been for you guys throughout this series and tonight? Man, it's been huge. Uh, just his shot making up ability. Uh, it's been, you know, making a lot of things happen up in the floor uh, for everybody else. Uh, it's, like I said, it's been huge. Uh, tonight, a lot of credit goes to home, but, you know, I think, you know, without, you know, Tyrese, uh, you know, we also don't win that game. Uh, you know, Maxi was huge tonight. Uh, he made plays, whether it's offensive and defensively pushing the pace. Uh, when Ben was in, you know, foul trouble, uh, so that was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I'm really happy for him.